Um, yeah, good, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, first of all, uh, I hope you're still r up for some uh, technical talk, but maybe deeply technical talk after all this day has already been passed. Um, so I'm going to talk to you, speak to you about the capabilities API in WordPress today. Um, and it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be development focused. And I have two main target audiences with this session, which is, first of all, if you are, imagine you think of a, you are a plugin developer and you are working on a plugin that you want to maybe, you want to publish it to a wider audience, maybe to WordPress.org or maybe you want to sell it. That is one your, then your one audience, and then the other part is if you are an, a developer working on client projects, um, you, we will also get there how you can customize plugins that are developed in a proper way, which I hopefully um, will get to you know more about. So um, yeah, as I said before, this talk will be relatively technical. The Capabilities API Foundation itself is very simple, but to truly leverage its power, we need to know a little bit more about how it works at its roots. So um, if, if there's something where uh, it's, it gets like over, over your head, because I also have to go through it very quickly, it's, um, please contact me later or have questions afterwards. So first of all, definitions. Um, what are capabilities? Capabilities in WordPress describe tasks that a user may or may not allow, be allowed to perform. So, for example, you would ask, uh, can a user edit the, uh, this post? Is the user allowed to activate a plugin? Something like everything like that. All these actions, you need to check whether the user actually has permissions. And then we have roles, which are a more um, like visually represented concept because they are exposed in the admin interface. Um, we, we probably all are familiar with the different roles that WordPress provides out of the box, the administrator, editor, author, contributor, subscriber. And all these roles um, basically are a set of capabilities um, and they define, yeah, they, by giving a user a certain role, you indirectly give that user a set of capabilities which is determined by this role. So let's look at the just some examples of WordPress capabilities. Um, there's a read capability, which is just a very basic um, capability to, for example, use to whether a user can read posts, which probably everyone can read existing, read public posts. Um, we have edit posts, for that would mean, are you allowed to edit posts in WordPress, upload files? Like, if you read on, and even with all the other ones that there are, there are tons of them, they are all pretty self-explanatory. However, it's not only WordPress that has capabilities. Um, any plugin, possibly even themes, but prob pro probably plugins for the most part, can have its own capabilities. So um, let's think about an example where we want to make a very simple plugin that introduces a tutorial post type. And um, we would want to have dedicated capabilities for this plugin. We could, for example, name, it, name them as in this example, like uh, we want to, let's imagine we call the plugin capability tutorials. So we prefix everything with CT. So capabilities for reading tutorials could be read CT tutorials or editing or managing options of this plugin could be called manage CT options. You could get the gist. Um, so why are capabilities important? There are three very important factors that Get, have to get into account here. Um, first of all, security. You should always check whether the current user has, should have access to a certain functionality. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a huge security. It can be a huge security issue otherwise. And then the other part is usability. Um, lots of times, WordPress by default exposes like tons of things in the admin menu, for example, that your users won't actually ever need. Um, so, and in this case, it's bad UX. You should only expose to what the user wants to see and wants to use um, regularly. And customizability is the third part, part um, of it. So if, even if your plugin has a very small scope um, and you would think, I don't need any role management, I don't need any capability management, other custom projects might think differently of it, so you should always leverage capabilities to enable other people to customize 
uh, your plugin to their custom requirements. So as a good ex uh, an example of that would be, for example, uh, yeah, WordPress. WordPress always shows you like um, the area, the appearance menu. It always shows you a way to uh, switch themes, but it also shows you a way to edit widgets, edit menus. But think about some think about a use case where you want a user to not be able to switch themes, but only to edit menus. Um, yeah, in that case, you would need to use capabilities to disable the switch themes part, but only show them at edit menu part, and you've already made the user experience a little better, and also adjusted the permissions in general because yeah, you don't want the you you don't want the user to submit themes for a reason. Let's look at some of the internals. Um, First of all, roles are internally, they are stored in a database table for options. It's stored as a serialized array, which I will not talk about anymore. Um, so uh, the capabilities that are granted for that for each role are also part of that array. So it will look like this, something like this, um, if I did uh, by default. So you would have the administrator and uh, yeah, and all the all the that roles capabilities, and you have all the other roles like editor, and here's at the bottom you see subscriber contributor, um, and something very important as you look at these roles is that um, capabilities in Word uh, roles in WordPress have they they make you think that roles are a hierarchical structure, but they're actually not because when you look at these um, when you look at the capabilities granted here, you see that a contributor just simply also has the read capability, which makes us think that the contributor generally has all everything that the su subscriber has, uh, but, it, but, the, but the, that role also has more capabilities. But this is, it makes sense to set it up that way, but I, I just want you to be aware that you don't need to set it up that way. You could also have certain roles that to some degree can do something that another role can do, but also at the same time, not you don't need to have all the capabilities that the other one has. Then uh, for the user, for the roles that a user actually has, those are stored in the user meta database table. Uh, it's also as a serialized array. It's very simple by default. Um, it usually is only one array entry, which simply is a role and a true to grant it. Um, but something you might notice now is it is an array. So an array can store multiple values, so we could have multiple roles per user. This is built in into WordPress. It's not exposed via UI because it's only a select with a single choice, but um, you may be aware that there are plugins to enable that, and it's really simple because it's already supported by the database schema or the, by the database setup. You can even theoretically put capabilities in that into that array directly um, that can be uh, maybe it would be needed in some custom setups but it's usually a bad idea because you should always tie capabilities to roles um, otherwise it will get pretty messy very quickly so for now that's all about roles we want to focus on capabilities and usually as a plugin developer you don't need to worry about roles always check for capabilities when you want to see if a user has permissions. Don't check the user's role directly. Then the next part is never add ca new capabilities to the database unless you introduce an entirely new role. Roles are stored like in the database, like I said before. Um, so if you have a custom role, you need to put it into the database with all the capabilities it has. But don't modify existing core, cap core roles, for example, in the database. You can grant additional capabilities to core roles in another way, which we will get to very soon. And then, very important, my main takeaway for today should be uh, use custom capabilities wherever possible. Don't just use, um, for, don't just use manage options for your options screen. Um, rather use something that is custom to your plugin. For example, in our example from before, uh, it could be manage CT options. Even if it doesn't bring you any benefit at this point, it can bring someone else benefits in order, in order, for example, if they want to give a user only access to your plugin screen, but not the WordPress admin, uh, not the WordPress settings screens. 
So checking capabilities, that is the very simple part of this API. It's the function current user can, and a capability is essentially a string. It's nothing more than that. Um, you, so you pass a string that could be manage options, that could be read posts um, or edit posts or whatsoever, and you get a Boolean value back telling you the user has access or the user does not have access. There's also a little less used function user can, which is essentially the same, but it does not check it for the current user, but some arbitrary user where you can pass in an ID. But otherwise, it's the same thing. So capabilities are, as mentioned before, they're either, cust either core capabilities or they are custom. And if they're custom, you need to take care of how they should be handled. And that now becomes the tricky part. So there are two types of capabilities. Um, there are primitive capabilities and meta capabilities. Primitive capabilities are the general capabilities which um, usually consist of a verb and a plural string, like edit posts, activate plugins, uh, install plugins, whatsoever. They are either granted via role from the database, so they are part of that roles array in the database, or you can also grant them dynamically via the user has cap filter, which we will also look at in a bit. And if you are a plugin adding capabilities to an existing role, uh, you should always use the user has cap filter. Um, then we also have meta capabilities, which are capabilities specific to a certain item. Um, and those usually consist of a verb too, but then it's a singular, string, a singular uh, noun. Um, for example, before we had edit posts, this is a meta capability which is more specific. It, it, it's edit post, singular. And as you can see, you can pass in the post ID into current user can. That is because current user can actually supports any arbitrary arguments. Um, but, you, but it's a common practice should be to um, pass, pass the context here. So for example, if you want to check if someone can edit a post, you should pass the post ID. If you want to check if someone can activate a specific plugin, specify the, uh, add this plugin's base name, which is like the file name slug. Um, so what happens if we have meta capabilities? Those always need to be mapped to a primitive, to one or more primitive capabilities. So in the very, in the most basic example, uh, it could be for with the activate plugin, for example, in WordPress core, this is simply mapped to activate plugins. Activate plugins then is a primitive capability that is part of the database. And when you check activate plugin um, with that with a certain plugin, uh, you just get you just get a true re result back if the user has activate plugins. Seems kind of unnecessary here, but it is not because by checking this instead of checking activate plugins directly, you get the possibility, you give other developers the possibility to, to tweak it to really fine tune it. For example, you, it, there may be some rare use case where um, a user should not be able to activate one specific plugin or the other way around, you only want a user to activate one plugin or whatever. So um, mapping using meta capabilities is a very powerful tool and even if you ma even if your default implementation is to map them in a very simple way use meta capabilities in favor of the primitive capabilities where it makes sense edit post here is a more complicated example where in core it can map to several several different capabilities for example but by a, in a very simple case it would map to edit posts um, but it, if the post that we pass in here is, for example, a private post, which is not publicly available, then you also need to have the capability edit private posts. Or if it's a published post, you also have the capability to edit um, a published post. Or if it's, um, if it's by another user than you are, you also need to have the capability to edit other people's posts. Then there are, last but not least here, there we have two very special capabilities. It's not really a capability in that case, but it's some, these, things these two things allow specific handling. For example, uh, exist is a capability that everybody, by definition, has. Um, and contrary is do not allow is a capability that nobody has, even not even super admins, which is the, um, admins, like the higher level of administrators when you use multi-site. Um, 
That can be useful if uh, do, do not allow can be useful when in a multi-site, for example, you want to take away a capability that a user actually has in the database. Um, exist. Uh, I don't. I can't think of a use case where this is currently used, but um, there may be cases where you just want a capability to give to everyone. Um, but be careful with this. Like, don't manage. Don't put, for example, don't map manage options to exist. Like that would be a bad idea. As we've seen before, uh, just a quick reminder of the naming conventions. Uh, this co should always consist of like a verb, an action, and a plural string for primitive capabilities, and then the same thing, but with a singular string of the, a singular noun of the same word, usually for m the respective meta capabilities. So now we're going to look at the flow. What happens if you call current user can? How does it check for capabilities? So after we call this function with any parameter, it internally calls map meta cap, which is the function responsible to map to check if the current check is for a meta capability, and if so, map it to its required primitive capabilities. For that, it runs a filter map meta cap that you as a plugin developer can hook into and tweak how you how the how your meta capability is mapped is resolved into um, primitive capabilities. After that, after you have the array of primitive capabilities required, there's another. It, the actual capabilities that the user has are fetched from the database, and they are then run through the user has cap filter, so you can alter w dynamically which primitive capabilities the user has. And this is the filter that you would use if you want to say, um, let's say the administrator also should have my uh, edit CT tutorials capability. Don't put it into the database for the administrator role, but use this filter and add this capability to the array. And after that, the user, the user's primitive capability that come out of this apply filters call, they now need to include all capabilities that come out of the apply filters from uh, the map meta cap call. So if if you have each of these capabilities, you can proceed. If just one of them is not present, you cannot proceed. So you don't have request the required capabilities. So how do we actually use this in plugins? Um, I set up a yeah, like I said, this pl example from before. I uh, implemented this. Uh, it's a very simple plugin that adds a tutorial post type um, and a settings screen with some options to customize the behavior of the post type. That's not a very user friendly idea, but I'm a developer, so um, yeah. Uh, so this is you can you can customize what the post type works like, but the idea the the purpose of this plugin is to show you an example of how you can use capabilities. So what do we do here? Again, current user can checks for capabilities. And a good example here for uh, is, uh, is also the functions for adding a menu page and add sub-menu page, because those require uh, to passing in, pass in a capability by, by default, which here I use manage CT options to edit to ac um, access the plugin's settings screen. You could, again, you could use manage options, but that prevents other users from fine-tuning access to your screen. You would always say, you can always, if you use manage options, which Core uses for all its settings screens, um, you can then only say, if you, want, if, you don't, if you want someone to have access to that screen, that person will also have access to all the Core settings screens, which might not be what you want. Um, so we could be become even more granular here. A good example for meta capability checks is settings. The individual settings of a settings page where we use a settings API for could look like this. Um, let's say well, this is for the uh, screen I showed before. It has like a setting for the rewrite slug, for what the post type should support, whether the post type has an archive. But by default, that means the whole, the, all these settings are accessible when you just can access the basic screen itself. You could be really granular and add controls, add, add capability checks for all each of these settings. Um, this is, a, I admittedly, a very extreme example, but this would re allow really fine-tuned control about this screen. By, this, by checking each individual setting, you allow other developers to say, let's, for example, 
I want the user to only access the third setting in this list, or for example. So after we've added all these capability checks, um, when we want to access this page, we see this. Why do we see this? Um, we use a custom capability. We have not, but we haven't taken care of actually granting it to anybody. So we need to grant the capability. The, pr the uh, manage CT options is a primitive capability. So we need to use the user has cap filter in order to grant it. So here, the, f er the first array is the capabilities that the user actually has from in the database. Then the second array is the capabilities that are currently checked. Um, Usually, you would only need to use the first parameter because you generally want to give uh, you, you generally want to grant that primitive capabilities based on the capabilities that the user already has. If that somehow includes expensive logic, though, maybe you should also check if the capability is even currently needed by de um, detecting whether it's part of the second parameter, the caps area. Because otherwise, uh, because this filter runs on every capability check of every capability, and if you have expensive logic there, yeah, you get you. It should not be happen then. It should not happen if it's not needed. Um, so what? How we could do that here is in our example. Let's just say with our very simple implementation, we just grant manage CT options whenever a user has the regular manage options. Again, for us now, it does not help at all. It, does, it doesn't help us at all because we could have just used manage options in the first place. But a, another a developer of a custom project could unhook this filter and implement their own handling of manage CT options, and that allows us granular access to the setting screen. Then let's access the screen now. It looks like this. Why? Because we also added individual capability checks for each of the settings, which we haven't taken care of granting. So because it's single settings, and as you can see before, we merged, we always passed in the slug of the setting to the check, manage CT option, singular. Um, you, we now, those are meta capabilities, and we need to map them to their required primitive capabilities. Using the map meta cap filter, we can do that. And here, it's all, we also apply it in a very simple way. We, if the current capability checked is manage CT options or singular, we just say you need to have manage CT options. Um, again, that is a, it's a very simple solution, but again, uh, an, uh, um, a, a developer of a custom project could tweak that again, either remove this filter entirely, or they could add further capabilities to have that are required to have for this meta capability check. And after we've done this. We've added this code bit. We can access the screen. Yeah. So we wrote a little uh, ex uh, additional code of what we would current commonly write. What's the benefit of all that? Like I said, security, usability, and customizability. And now I will. We will have a brief look. S so um, at how this could be used to customize access. If you are in a custom project that wants to use this plugin. So for example, let's imagine you are writing a custom project using this CT Tutorials plugin, and um, you want to add a designated role to manage all the tutorial stuff. In that case, you could in introduce a role. You should introduce roles on when activating a plugin, because uh, they, are part of the, they are part of the database, and they're written into the database. So, so that should absolutely not happen on every request or something like that. So we would add the, our role tutorial manager, grant all the, our custom capabilities to that role, and after that, we would remove the filter that the plugin added by default to map manage CT options to manage options, because we don't want that anymore. From now on, we only want people to have that role to have access. That would be one example to tweak it. We can, uh, I also have an example for, manage, uh, for adjusting a meta capability. For example, let's say that rewrite slug setting, we only want it to, we only, let's say we only want it to um, be editable by a network administrator when there is a multi-site setup. In that case, we can add our own map meta cap filter, and if that capability is checked, if, if that capability is currently checked, we would 
see, we won't want to check if the past argument, which is, which could be CT rewrite slug, if it's CT rewrite slug, and we are in a multi-site, let's say we, sh we should also require managed network options, which is the capability that a user, uh, that the network administrator has in order to manage network options. And at this point, the first setting is only, can only be accessed and managed by the network administrator. So the screen would like this. The first setting is just gone and we have tweaked access to it in a very fine-tuned way. Just a few uh, notes about multi-site because things, those are a few things to have in mind. Um, the network administrator, that I, wh which I've mentioned before, um, it appears to be an additional role in WordPress. It's technically only a flag, um, so it's not, it, doesn't, it doesn't, isn't really a role. It doesn't have any capabilities. It's just a flag that says this user has all capabilities. The only way to get around this is to say, do not allow. So that is a very good use case of the do not allow special value. Um, if there's something where you don't even want a network administrator to have access to, which can happen in certain cases, um, yeah, use do not allow. That being said, um, even though the network administrator is a flag, and there is f a function to check that flag with is super admin, it's, it has been determined that this is a bad practice and um, we should always check against capabilities which as uh, the similar as we don't shouldn't check against user roles in, in regular roles we also shouldn't check against this flag um, there's still core uh, there's still occurrences of is super admin in core but we are trying to eliminate this and maybe at some point hopefully at some point we'll even be able to migrate the network administrator to an actual role based system for multi-site network to it so that it's not just a simple flag anymore just as here's just a brief list of the current core capabilities that are used for multi-site. Uh, be aware that none of these capabilities are actually somewhere in the database, just because it's not a role, uh, b because, because the network administrator is not a role, as mentioned before. These are capabilities are used in the code, and you can use it in your code as well. Again, preferably use your own, um, but you could use them. And um, those capabilities, yeah, are the network administrator capabilities by default. We have a few differences when using multi-site versus single site. Um, oftentimes it happens that in multi-site there are capabilities that, a uh, that only a network administrator have, but in a single site the administrator should have them. Um, so because single site is the default, these capabilities are always just granted to administrators. So in multi-site we have to kind of artificially take them away from them. So the way we can do that is either by this code snippet, we could uh, installing plugins is a good example of this because yeah, in a multi-site only network administrators can ex install plugins, but in a regular site, uh, regular site administrators can also install, can install plugins. So we could do this with uh, by install plug by checking if install plugin is called and if if we're in a multi-site and the current user is not a super admin we use do not allow um, again this is just an example you don't need to do this check because it's already in core um, but this is as it says above it not so great why because we check a super admin and as I just mentioned we should rather check against capabilities so a better way to do this exact same thing is to simply say, if we're in multi-site, also require manage network plugins. That means uh, only be because only the user super admin or network administrator has this capability, it essentially will do the same thing, but we check against capabilities solely as we should. And that's it for now. Um, there are a couple of more things uh, that you might want to know about capabilities, especially something uh, very important is how you use custom capabilities for registering custom post types or custom taxonomies. Um, this was a little beyond the scope of this session, but it's also part of this plugin. So if you're interested in that, you can look at the plugins code base. It's available on GitHub. And that's it for me for now. Um, before we dive into questions, I just want to open up um, a sh sh short list of other resources that you may be interested in if you're interested in learning more about capabilities in WordPress. But that's it. Fantastic. Felix, thank you. Um,
there's a lot to take in there. I, I'm really pleased, Felix, how you drew attention to thinking about how others might want to use the code that you write. I, I found it really interesting that you said you couldn't imagine how people might want to do it, but you still do it. Yeah. And I think that's part of the joy of working on WordPress when developers just go that extra step to say, I don't know what you might want to do with this, but I'm very open to you doing it. And that's exactly what has made this such a, such a strong project. Do we have any questions? I don't believe we do. No? Yes, we do. We do. Again, it's the light. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey, I'm Bartosz from uh, Poland. Um, I wanted to ask one question about, uh, about the things you've been talking about, because uh, a lot of <clears throat> you've been talking about fine-grained control over what we are doing. And, and I agree about that, that if we build something custom, like a plugin or something else, we, can, we, we do have fine-grained control. I wanted to ask about your opinion. If you, don't you have a feeling that we don't have fine-grained control over the native WordPress uh, elements? That is a very good and fair question. Um, we, we partly have, but to a big extent, we also don't. Um, it's actually the second point here addresses that. So th um, there are many places in core where even where core itself doesn't use capabilities as granular as I pointed out we should. And um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a step getting to that point. Um, well, my personal worst thing is like you can't, there's no capability to edit menus or to edit widgets. You always have to use some other thing, which is a, a pain oftentimes. But we're, there are efforts to fix that in all these different areas. And uh, yeah, the second uh, bullet point here has also has a link to all these tickets um, that, that we've been working on or, or will be working on in the future. But I agree, this is a problem at this point in some times. We have a question down here in the middle. Look at that. Whoa, careful. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't actually a question. I was uh, waving at my colleague who just uh, entered the room. <laughs> 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 uh, and I couldn't think of something, but uh, thank you for a great talk. Oh. <laughs> of Anyone else? I think we might be done. Are we? I think we're clear. Felix, thank you very much. Felix Hans, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. And Felix, if anyone does want to ask you any detailed questions, you're around for the rest of the Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, approach me today, tomorrow. I'm here. Fantastic. Thank you.